Hello friends, this video on thermodynamics part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 25. The Gibbs energy, it's a new thermodynamic function we have derived just now. So it is denoted by G and G is nothing but H minus Ts. So it is an extensive property and a state function similar to most of the other thermodynamics property. And delta G system is nothing but H system minus T delta system. This is the whole delta G, the whole surrounding. So we use this term delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Right? And by definition, it is nothing but the amount of energy available for a system at a given set of condition that can be put into useful form. And the reason why we found this delta G was because it was difficult to find S total, entropy total. And we saw that delta G was nothing but uh, minus T delta S, I think, total. So the sign changes. If delta G is negative, the process is spontaneous. The delta G is positive, the process is non spontaneous. Please note, for S total, it was, if S total is greater than zero, it was spontaneous, right? So since this delta G is nothing but, delta G is nothing but minus T delta S total. That was, we saw in the last uh, slide. So the sign changes here in this case. So if delta G is negative, the process is spontaneous. If delta G is greater than zero or positive, the process is not spontaneous. If delta G is zero, the process is in equilibrium. Right? And with delta Z, we can tell the feasibility of the reaction. Also, it is noted that the reaction feasibility is dependent on temperature. That is a process which is spontaneous at temperature T1 may not be spontaneous at temperature T2. It can happen. Right? So, we know that exothermic is nothing but temperature which uh, in exothermic reaction we say that higher temperature favors spontaneity and in endothermic exothermic we say that lower temperature favor uh, spontaneity. I'll explain this just hold on for a second. What I'm trying to say is the spontaneity of the reaction is dependent on temperature because delta G if you see has a temperature factor. Correct. So if you see if I make use of delta H and delta S, let's suppose delta H is positive, delta H is negative, and delta S is positive and delta S is negative. Four options we can have. See, delta H can have positive or negative, and delta S can have positive and negative. So we'll make this kind of structure. So if delta S is positive, and delta H is negative, that means I have this case, uh, the formula I have is delta H minus T delta S. So if delta H is negative, that means negative minus delta S is positive, that is into some positive number. So the whole thing is negative, right? So if you see delta H is negative, so minus X, right? And delta S is positive, some plus Y the whole thing becomes negative. It is always spontaneous. Okay. Let's take this scenario first. Or let's take this only. If delta H is negative and delta S is negative. So if my delta H is negative, that is minus X. And delta S is also negative, that is T into minus Y. So this becomes y minus x right so y minus sorry y into t y into t minus x so if temperature is very high delta g will become positive you see this is nothing but t into y minus x why because this minus minus cancel this becomes t into y minus x if delta if t temperature is very high the whole thing will become positive and the reaction will be non spontaneous so only at low temperature reaction is spontaneous. So it is low temperature, it is spontaneous. Correct. Let's take this scenario. Delta H is positive. So I have delta H minus T delta S, right? This is the formula I have. So delta H is positive. So I have X minus T into and uh, this guy is also positive. Why? Uh, let's suppose 
entropy division number y. So this guy, for this guy to be negative, temperature has to be very high, right? Because if the temperature is low, suppose it is one or zero, this thing is positive, the whole thing is positive. But for reaction to be spontaneous, this G has to be negative. So for this, X minus TY has to be negative. G has, T has to be high. So I can say that high temperature favors spontaneity. Right? This scenario will take delta H is positive minus T into delta S is negative. So let's take minus pi here. So this becomes X plus T pi. You put any value of T, it is always greater than zero. Right? So it is always non spontaneous. Correct? So I have four options. In this case, it's always spontaneous. In case, lower temperature is spontaneous. High temperature spontaneous, always not. And that's what I have said. It's exothermic, that is blue one. It favors, uh, sorry, exothermic is this one. Uh, delta H will tell you it's exothermic, it's endothermic, right? So, exothermic is this guy's at low temperature, exothermic, and this is endothermic. Right? So this guy is exothermic first one, this guy is endothermic. So for endothermic, my delta H is positive. So high temperature will favor spontaneity. Exothermic, my delta H is negative. Low temperature favors spontaneity. That is why I wrote this statement. For Gibbs energy change, there is a formula that delta G is nothing but delta G standard plus RT ln k where delta g is nothing but gibbs free energy change and delta g with r is the standard gibbs free energy change this is standard and rt log k something either this is a formula we don't have derivation for this please remember this formula delta g standard delta g is the gibbs free energy change nothing but delta g standard plus RT LN. See, Gibbs free energy change for an equilibrium reaction is zero. This is a reaction AB plus B is an equilibrium, or you can write this as A plus B equilibrium C plus I. Both are same. Any notation you can use. The equilibrium. We'll study more of this uh, in the next chapter when we talk about the equilibrium. We have one full chapter dedicated about equilibrium. So there's a the Gibbs free energy is zero. So if you put this in the formula earlier formula we had, the earlier formula we have as was delta G Gibbs free energy is nothing but delta G naught plus R T L N K. So this becomes zero. So what we can see that is. The standard Gibbs free energy change is nothing but minus 2.303 RT log K. And this is how you find the standard Gibbs free energy change. And then we can use to find other Gibbs free energy change. We'll take one example uh, for the Gibbs free energy change. Calculate the standard Gibbs free energy. This is standard Gibbs because of zero. Standard Gibbs free energy change for the conversion of oxygen to ozone. This is the reaction we have, oxygen to ozone, and the Kp is given for this conversion is this. We'll study more about this Kp factor in the next chapter, equilibrium chapter. So the formula is pretty simple. We have the standard Gibbs free energy change is nothing but minus 2.303 RT log of K. Right? Instead of ln, we are using log, so we are multiplying with 3.303. This becomes 2.303. R will take uh, 8.314. T is 2.98. And then log of this values. 2.47 into 10 to the power minus 20. So if you solve this, you get 163 triple zero. Almost. Almost. 
There is nothing but 163 kilo joule per hour. And that is my answer. The question says at 60 degrees Celsius, nitrogen tetroxide is 50% distributed. So that means I have N2FO, it is in equilibrium with NO2. Calculate the standard free energy change at this temperature and at 1 atmospheric pressure, 1 atm and 60 degrees Celsius. 60 degrees Celsius is nothing but 333 Kelvin, right? So let's see this. You start with uh, one mole. Initially, you start with one mole of this. There is zero mole of NO2. When equilibrium, we have one mole of 0.5 mole of this. This is 50% dissociated, right? So for, with 0.5, it is 50% dissociated. 0.5 we have now. And for 0.5, how much? How many moles will get here? One mole, correct? Because for one mole of N2, four you get two mole of NO2. So you get one mole of this. This is two into 0 0.5. So total mole here is one. Total mole here is 1.5. So total atmospheric pressure is one one atm. So pressure by N2 O4 will be what? 0.5 by 1.5 atm. And pressure by NO2 will be what? 1 by 1.5 atm. So here the Kp was not given. So we'll use this uh, formula to find Kp, which we'll be learning more in next chapter, but I'll just use this. NO2, so pressure of NO2, these are two moles here, square by pressure of N2O4. So product by reactant and you put to the power the number of moles involved. This becomes uh, NO2 is this guy, one by 1.5 to the power two by 0.5 to the power 1.5. You solve this, you get 1.338. That is the Kp because there are two ATM here, one ATM here, divide to get Kp is this. So you can find delta G naught minus 2.303 RT log of K. Let's put the values here minus 2.303 R is 8.314 joule per Kelvin. Or more into T is 333 log of 1.3. You solve this, you get minus 763.8 kilojoule per mole. That is the answer. Here the Kp was not given, so we have found the Kp with this method. And we'll, we'll learn more about this uh, finding K in the next chapter, equilibrium chapter, where uh, we'll solve more questions on this. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.